Brick Maniacs. It's time for another episode of Brick Mania TV. All right, thank you very much for joining us today. We have an exciting new kit. It is the Pioneer 10 with astrophysicist minifigure. Why don't you uh, get right into the history of this? Little US uh, space probing history. Uh, they started in the 60s, just, you know, coming up with a theory of how, how to probe into space. And in the 70s, they launched the Pioneer 10. It was... Uh, you know, Pioneer 10 after uh, several scientific uh, other space missions to get the, I think the jet propulsion spin axis correctly. Oh wow! So what was the what was the purpose of this of this particular space other than probing space? Right. Well, they wanted to uh, document Jupiter sure. and uh, to explore that planet just outside the asteroid belt. Um, it made several first first of its kind missions first to successfully transverse the asteroid belt, wow. um, the first to successfully get to Jupiter and document it with 11 different types of instruments, measuring cosmic rays, m electromagnetic right. pulses, and asteroid dust was a big factor. So there are like collector and detection panels. All over the place. All over the this place. This thing is jam-packed with, uh, how is this thing uh, powered? Uh, plutonium. Plutonium. Great, Scott. That's great. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, so, yeah, um, I meant, I think that was meant to last a while, 12 wow. years or so. Um, yeah. It was launched in 72, uh, made it to Jupiter a year and a half later, um, and then slingshot around the planet yeah. and out of our solar system, another first of its kind, one of five uh, space probes right. to achieve then, uh, yeah. escape velocity. Right. <laughs> and that's some crazy mathematics involved in figuring out how and when to like, hit certain orbits and slingshots. And it just, right. It's, and to be yeah. at the planet uh, so they could transmit back to Earth right. and it be the sunlit side so they can make some um, you know, pictures through right. uh, photographic, uh, what do you call it? Sure. Stuff. Stuff, photographic <laughs> stuff. Highly technical. <laughs> no, it's cool. Science stuff. <laughs> Science stuff. Um, I guess uh, I guess part of the, the, maybe another part of the mission, um, that we have some plaques on here. Yes. Um, you want to talk about those? So, uh, with it achieving uh, escape, uh, you know, uh, trajectory to explore space, the idea of extraterrestrial life is uh, uh, part of that, so we would like to communicate sure. with possible ETs. And uh, they developed a, a plaque, uh, it's gold ionized aluminum to last the longest through, through space right. and etched in um, a few things that would describe um, what humans look like is <laughs> what stands out most. Uh, right. So we made a, you made a nice uh, minifig version yeah. of the humanoid in to scale of uh, the, the parabolic disc in the background. So you can see the scale of the, the probe itself to the humans. And then where it came from, when, is uh, pictured in the, the, the sun in our solar mm -hmm. system and the trajectory that the space probe was on a mission for. What else is on there? Um, well, the big star looking thing, a snowflake thing, is like 14 pulsars. pulsars I think yeah. that maps the time frame that it was launched. So this arrangement would tell you Makes sense. the when year. And, and in, how uh, far, yeah. Right. Um, so I've included, I guess, I don't know, do you have any other details to add about the history or you want to move into the kit? Um, uh, the last picture on the oh, sure. on the plaque is the hydrogen atom. Right. Um, it's just to know we're we know what math we know what science yeah and we know chemistry. science 
<laughs> we know what we're talking about. We know science. <laughs> Nine so, planets, right? Yeah, Oops. I mean, <laughs> so hopefully this uh, prompts, prompts you to look into, like we did a little yeah. bit, um, uh, all these facts and cool science, Absolutely. spacey things. Spacey things. Um, yeah. yeah. So kit-wise, um, I uh, had to make a hexagonal bus that they, it holds the 11 instruments, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then from that project these uh, trusses that hold the 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 engines that kind of spin it on its axis. So it was a challenge to get all that to fit into this size. Um, but I think I, I I crammed as much as yeah. I could in there. I think I see some ski poles hidden in the back. We've got Is gold ski, pole? ski poles. Um, Look at that. Nice. That's and that's a that's a nice. Part usage right there. Thanks. That's cool. Uh, the gold flex axle yeah. pieces are um, projecting out, and to get uh, two to bend, you know, you got one straight one, but these were shorter, and uh, it's got kind of a flux capacitor look. I like oh, the sure. uh, Y Y shape. Um, how it bends in there. So yeah. Probably. I mean, just overall, man, it's a really just sharp looking model here. Like. This thing would look super cool on your desk, you know? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you see the minifig, you see the plaque, uh, a two by four tile on the stand. Yeah. You can position the probe a couple of different ways. It'll loosely hold its, its, its uh, right. position there, posable. Um, there's also another small plaque uh, on the probe itself, so it shows you actually where it is on the probe. Yeah, um, and we've included two versions of, of both the, this plaque and then the bigger plaque. So these ones have the uh, minifigure representation, but I also I also included the the real actual um, plaque representation. Right, the more of humanoid that. than minifig. So, <laughs> yeah, but uh, so it's up to you. Um, we like to have fun with it, so yeah. you have some options and. So there's a little sticker pack uh, to put some of these on those the are, back of the disc. What are those again? Are those the meteorite detectors or something? Yeah, asteroid meteor detector panels. Detector um, panels. They want to see how much dust is hit, you know. So it's it's traveling this way and shooting information back to Earth. Right. Um, so it's maybe hitting some dust particles as it travels through space and and. Very interesting. That's uh, where all you know all the instruments are collecting the data this right. way. Super cool. Um, so this would have launched on a what was the name of the rocket that this would have launched on? I'm blanking. Centaur. The Atlas. Atlas Centaur. Centaur. It. Uh, so we have a small model that looks like the Atlas Centaur. So this um, is one one tenth scale. This is one thirty fifth scale. So yeah, if you're interested in. The launch date uh, was March 2nd, 1972, um, and boom, we're off into right. Jupiter and beyond, cool. billions and billions of miles beyond. Billions, yes, exactly. <laughs> so um, the previous kit, the Mercury Atlas, that was, you can modify that kit to actually create this um, Atlas Centaur, which is pretty cool, I thought. So, and then back here for scale, bam, someone brought in their... Uh, this bad boy. So this is the scale of that. Just cool. <laughs> Thought we'd show that off. Sure. Anything dwarf else? Dwarf my probe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You're dwarfing my probe. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> cool. Uh, so we are just, I mean, obviously this is sort of a newer thing for Brickmania to be releasing uh, space themed kits like this. Uh, there's obviously countless different missions out there. Uh, if you want to see any specific outer space things built, leave uh, a space suggestion in the comments. We'd really appreciate space. that. Um, with that, I think that's the episode, right? Right? You got anything else? Cool. Live, live long and prosper. Live long and prosper <laughs> for billions and billions of years. Uh, for more information, check out brickmania.com. Thank you very much for watching.